I'm Franco-American. I was born and raised in Chicago. My parents are French, and they moved to Chicago to work. My father was a professor of sociology. And um, I grew up a rebellious little tyke in Chicago. And when I was uh, 22, by that time we had moved to Maryland. And just out of the blue, one fine day, I had a grand mal epileptic seizure. This seizure took away my driver's license for a year. And uh, I bought a used bike from a policeman in Washington, D.C. It was a big hunk of junk, a green bike called a Nord de France, I think it was a Peugeot, and it was a size 57, and I ride a 51, just to let you know that I really didn't know shit about cycling. So I, I worked at a gym at this point, and uh, I was a fitness instructor, and one day somebody that I worked with, this guy named Steve, said, Marion, do you, do you race, or are you training for something? And I said, no, I just I don't have a driver's license, so I'm riding to work and back. And he said, well, do you want to try a race? I said, yeah, I'll try anything once. So he said, well, look, there's a criterium on Sunday in College Park. It was at the University of Maryland, so why don't you meet us there? And, uh, and I'll try and coach you through it. I'm like, all right. So I showed up with um, underwear on under my chemise, bright orange wool socks, <laughs> tennis shoes, because I didn't have clip and pedals, and my big uh, green hunk of junk bike. And uh, I get to the start line, and all these chicks are on custom-made bikes with their Lycra skin suits and their sponsors and whatnot. And they're all kind of looking me up and down going, what is this at the start line? And I'm starting to think, shit, I've never ridden in a Peloton. I've never ridden with anyone next to me. So I have two choices. I either go off the front or off the back, but I definitely don't want to ride in the thick of this because if I take anyone down, it won't go unnoticed. So we took off and I just put it in my biggest gear. I think I had a 5212 and I rode the 5212 for 40K around the course. And every time I came through the start finish line, I could hear Steve screaming at me to grab a wheel, get cover. And I'm looking up going, get cover from what? It's beautiful out. There's the sun and, and you know, there's nothing that I need to get cover from. And, and then the last turn, I think three girls came around me. So I ended up fourth and, and I was quite pleased with how I did. And that just set me off on this. A mission to see how far I could go in cycling. You went, you went pretty far because you two silver medals at the Olympics. Yep, uh, broke a world record in the pursuit, and uh, actually was the first woman I think to ride a 3:30, and then six world titles um, and 200 plus victories. And uh, and you were riding for France, not America then. Yes, I rode for France. The Americans wouldn't have me because they said that because I had epilepsy, I would be a risk to their team. Right. And, obviously, and we've had, having epilepsy, after your, after your career you've gone into getting, Just, helping well, people with epilepsy. I've always been a spokesperson either for the Epilepsy Foundation of America or the French Foundation for Research on Epilepsy. And now for the third year running I've organized a, a fund ride out of Lille Jourdain which is in the, the foie gras region of France. That's where you eat all the good goose fat and whatnot. Um, and they've got some good red wine too. And uh, so we organize a fun ride that's either 60 or 120k. And because I absolutely hate trophies, I mean, they just, they don't do anything. They collect dust. We found a local chocolate factory to make us chocolate trophies. So that happens every year in May. This year it's May 27th. And we organized one for the first time this year in Australia at the Sandown Motor Course outside of Melbourne. A good circuit. A really good circuit. That was John Trevorrow's idea out of cycling events. And he's been just a gem on that. And the Epilepsy Foundation of Victoria, um, UCB, backed us up on that. And we're probably going to get another one going in March because March is pretty much um, March 26th is what they call Epilepsy Day. In, in and, Australia this is? Yeah, so we're going to try and get something going in March. Nothing's defined or settled yet, but that's the idea. Um, Western Australia would like to get a ride going as well. Over in Perth somewhere? Yeah, maybe up the Swan River and have people ride hard, you know, like 100 and 150 K. And then at night we can do wine tasting as a compensation. Perfect. So yeah, that would be a good mix. And all the money goes so. to research? All the money goes to research. Um, for my ride and from the rides in Australia, it'll go to research or maybe something, you know, maybe to develop something um, for people who have epilepsy, uh, you know, care center or whatever. It just, it depends on what project they're working on at the time. So you've passed on your knowledge as well with having epilepsy to other <coughs> people such as myself who have got epilepsy and that want to compete in sport. I think that to hold people back from competing or from doing sports, people who have epilepsy is, is a mistake. I, I have a feeling that sport has always helped me with mm -hmm. my epilepsy and um, it just, there, there's nothing negative about having epilepsy and being an athlete. So this is fire, um, my guard dog. Um, no, I just think it's a, it's a plus having epilepsy. It's always made me push myself harder. 
and I, I'm not sure that if I didn't have epilepsy I would have turned to cycling and I would have made it this far because I had to prove to my parents that I could still do something despite having epilepsy and to prove to my first neurologist who told me that I shouldn't ride a bike or swim or, or walk by myself or do anything that I was fully capable of doing anything I set my mind to do. So, so, uh, so the success has come down from purely from trying to prove a point to people? In a way, just more about you know letting people know that if you have a will, then where there's a will, there's a way. I mean, that's that's sort of my Motto. mantra. You know, it's uh, why tell people why they can't, just show them how you can. And it's take it's certainly taking your place because last year you helped coach the Boyg's Telecom team. That's now the Europe Car team. Yep. Yeah, and I I mean I would definitely have to say that their success this year was, uh, you know, a little bit attributed to the work we did the two years prior. I mean, we just did in terms of strength programs, cryotherapy, just bringing in new things to the team. We updated a few things and, and that helped and, and, you know, and the boys took to it and they kept working at it. So good on them for... So they've, they've kept on doing what you had brought in last year. Yeah. And I hired some staff too that made a difference, the team doctor and the uh, biologist who were both, uh, you know, just are precious members of their success. So, uh, so this year, what what this year? year, officially, I'm unemployed. Um, I'm doing. Uh, I'm still doing a lot of speaking, a lot of speaking tours. I did a speaking tour in Australia. I'm going to be speaking in Michigan in the U.S. soon at an epilepsy association conference. And I'm just redoing, revalidating a few diplomas here and starting a coaching business, one-on-one. Um, -on -one. Some of it will be coaching at people's homes. Um, uh, you know, a system where somebody wants to prepare a marathon, so I'll go and work with them. And if it's like a business person that, you know, only has restricted hours that they can work out, then I'll go to their place and work out with them. I've got a lot of young cyclists coming to me too. Um, some French, some foreigners. So Hello. I'm still working, yeah, <laughs> still working with a few cyclists. And um, yeah, so that's, that's slowly but surely it'll be official in May, uh, in May, in the spring. And we were talking before that and that you'd like... Um that you'd like to help women cycling become a bit more recognized, much more professionally run? Well, women cycling, I mean, has come a long way on its own with no help from the UCI or very little. And uh, it's about time that the UCI gave back, put a little bit more in, um, the TV media as well. I mean, and I know, you know, any pro man who's trained with some of the top women can vouch for uh, for their strength and for for their determination and you know if you look at a lot of times when you look at the world championships I mean the women's race is one of the more exciting races um, there's a lot more punch maybe because the distance is shorter but it's there's there's always action there's always something going on and with the the, the um, departure of the Tour de Load and the Tour de France for women yeah, so there needs to be there needs to be a little bit more um, cohesion and a little bit more uh, media media uh, coverage yeah media, yeah. Co co media coverage well, thank you ever so much yeah thank you oh, cool <laughs>